I don't like too much being called uh, like a you know, stats guru or all those uh, nicknames. I describe myself in the golf data landscape as um, someone that is able to use data. So in this condition, I go for the pin. My scoring average is 3.68 and also played the game at the highest level. And I think it's a pretty rare combination. Chip shot from right of the green is much easier than laying up to 60, 70 yards away. I, I wouldn't know exactly how to address myself, but I like, uh, you know, secret weapon. It's something that we use a lot for the Ryder Cup. My name is Eduardo Molinari. I'm a professional golfer and I'm also Arco's chief data strategist. My nickname is Dodo because Francesco couldn't pronounce Edoardo correctly. I studied engineering in college in Torino and I thought that it would have been cool and helpful to have some stats about my game. So I started tracking back in 2003. I developed a very simple spreadsheet, started tracking number of parts, fairways hit, greens regulation. And then during the years that became bigger and bigger and bigger. I had some breakthrough in, in using the data. I realized that I was very good with uh, my wedges from a certain range. So I started laying up at that distance and I started making a lot more birdies from that distance. This is the US Amateur Trophy. It's a replica from the one I won in 2005 long time ago now and then I have the two Ryder Cups here one that I played and won in 2010 and then the one that I was vice captain for in 2023. There's a putting platform Sal is testing it properly you got lasers you got you can move it up to five percent each way uh, stimping at 11 so it's good speed good tournament speed. I've been putting better recently so I'm actually now better than the average PGA Tour pro from here. Eduardo is so unique. When you think about, I would say, the stereotype of a professional athlete, um, you don't really think about somebody who's like a brilliant engineer. And that's like, Eduardo's got that unique combination. Yep. All right, All right. you won. Well done. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he's a professional golfer. There was a player in Europe um, that came to ask uh, how he should play a certain hole. Matt Fitzpatrick is on the move, 149 yards away at the third. Take a look at this beauty. And it falls. Fitzpatrick with a two there at the third. I used their dispersions, kind of overlay them on, on the hole and had like a predicted scoring average and predicted number of birdies that they would have done with driver, three wood or two iron of the tee. And I remember suggesting driver, and I think he birded the hole three days out of four. And at the end of the week, he came back to me and said, oh, you, you're a genius, we need your help a bit more often. I can't remember the first time I met him, but I do remember 2015, I was asking him about uh, his stats and stuff. He told me they had this laptop and it had thousands and thousands of rows of data and it's really slow and it doesn't load. I showed what I was building to Matt. It was very raw and uh, not nowhere near the finished product. But he was very impressed with what he saw. Then as soon as he started playing after COVID, he was the very first one to, to start entering the data in the system and to see the benefit of it. To think how far he's come from there, I'm sure he's uh, pretty delighted. With the data that we were tracking with Matt, it showed us pretty clearly that with his accuracy, if he gained distance, he could have been one of the best drivers of the ball. It tells you exactly what you're doing. That one thing you find doesn't change your game and you can improve by three, four, five strokes and it makes a hell of a difference. I couldn't believe how much distance he gained and the accuracy was still intact, which is a very difficult thing to do. I think we've both pushed each other on. I think uh, he's helped me understand the game a little bit better. And it was very rewarding. I would have never thought when I started this that I would have uh, helped uh, a major champion uh, win a major. And it was uh, very, very satisfying. 
What a great champion. The insights he gives me, the reports, it's all extremely valuable. I feel like I've helped him with a few things as well with some of my feedback and it's nice to have been able to do it together really. I think it was within eight weeks, I was up to 10 players. I never thought that I would get to, the, to this point. I never thought I was going to be a vice captain one day for a Ryder Cup team. I felt like I pushed for him to get that role as well before he got it. Eduardo's very key to the success of, of the Ryder Cup. We need someone that we can rely on with the statistics and you know, this game is all about finding those incrementals, you know, those little bits that, that can help you and you add them all up and hopefully it results in a trophy. My role as a vice captain is mostly to help Luke have an understanding of how the players are playing. The stuff that he's built for, for Luke to help him um, with selections, with pairings, all sorts of things I think is fantastic. Anytime you can be involved in the Ryder Cup, it's something exceptional, it's something that you know goes in your career resume. When I think about the week in Rome, I would say very rewarding. 2025 at Bethpage is going to be an incredible Ryder Cup for many different reasons. The New York fans would be very tough, would be very loud. It's a, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for all of our players to, to accomplish something truly incredible. It's been very busy in the last few years, especially the last few months. The Ryder Cup as well was something that took a lot of time away from my golf. At age 44 in today's game, it's an uphill battle and I'm doing everything I can not to lose speed. Plus, you get to play against younger players who are usually much longer. So I need to make sure that everything else is working. I have two kids and a wife when I'm at home. So I want to make sure that when I go practice, I spend time on what's relevant, what, what I need. I make sure that you know my blueprint is more or less where it needs to be. And then if not, thanks to all the data that I'm collecting, um, it's very easy to address it uh, right away. So driving was good, gaining 0.8, approach play was excellent, 1.3, short game was okay, 0.3, and putting was very good. Like you're gaining a ton of strokes from every distance in your approach game, except 125 to 150, which yeah. is like noticeably lower. Sometimes I'm not that good at short irons. I think uh, a lot usually is distance control there. So then in this case, what I would do is I'm going on the range and I'm going to hit a few shots with the trackman, uh, maybe hit shots to uncomfortable numbers. All right, so let's do 125 to 150. What's the average PGA Tour approximately? approximately? From, from 144, well, 24 feet, 20, okay. something right. like that. If it's not short, it's good. Whew, seven feet, gain half a shot. Straight away. Nice start. Good start. One twenty-five point nine. Another seven Another feet. Point three. Two times in a row, seven feet. But plenty of green left. Six Three feet. feet. <laughs> Another half a shot. Let's see. Let's see how we did. You heard some ridiculous shots. And. All in all, 0 0.9, 0 0.9 so shots. It was like double what you wanted, which yeah, was like half the goal a shot. was like half a shot, so 0 0.9. So it was a good session, I would say. Gotta get my round started. Me too. Let's see who does it quicker. I think I'll win this one. I think. And done. Done. Just. No, part <laughs> five. I'll give you half a shot now. Yeah. Half? Half a all shot. Right. One of the things that we're going to be launching is really taking the core strategy work that Eduardo's done and continues to do for the top players in the world and bringing it to every golfer in the world that wants it. He's exactly the same as what I'm doing for Fitzy and, and other top pros in the game in terms of course management and strategy. Took their dispersions in recent weeks overlay them on a course, and then I will give them an exact target, an exact decision of the tee. Behind the scenes, what the machine learning algorithm, everything's figuring out, it's based on my dispersion pattern and based on, I mean, the goal goes left, 
and everything. This is my optimal strategy off the tee. Let's see if I can optimally execute. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, dog leg left, so you should be going probably left half of the fairway to cut some of the corner off. And it's a par five, so you should get very close in two. So when Matt goes to a tournament, yep. what does he, like what information does he have? It'd be very similar. Uh, we would give him for certain holes where he's a bit undecided on what to do off the tee or into the greens, we would give him a specific target line. So instead of saying left half of the fairway, we would say five yards left of center. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's the same kind of message. Yeah. And it's the same algorithm that we use for Matt and what we use in there. Cool. And then the, it's telling me to hit driver. So it's okay. time for some driving. Perfect. That's exactly right. So I pull up the phone. Look at the hole and it's telling me driver almost on the right edge of that left bunker, which sounds about right. So I'll try and do that. Too far left. Well, I, I didn't hit a good shot. It was a little bit too far left, but I like the line they gave me. And what's amazing about it is one, it will work for every golf hole in the world. It'll adjust for weather conditions. And what's your optimal target? And that's not existed for any golfer except the 40 best golfers in the world that utilize Arcos Pro Insights right now. And we are bringing that to every golfer in the world. Basically middle, like past that bunker, stay right, like can, can I go left? Mm -hmm. And we'll always carry the bunker out most of the time. So go on three wood and get half a shot from Eduardo. That should be fine, over yep. the bunker. Yep, okay. good shot. Everything that we've brought to the golfer from an insights perspective, I think this has the potential to have the greatest impact on your game and on your scores. Now I'm in like the optimal position to attack that pin for the next shot. So I think I'm feeling pretty good about the strategy. I think it was dead on so far. Yeah, 100%. I think uh, clarity of mind is everything. When you stand on the tee and you know that's the right decision, I think it makes golf uh, much easier. Yeah. I do love data. I studied engineering because I, I always love math and numbers and stats. And I know that it's something that made my game much, much better. It's definitely a competitive edge, both at my level or at the weekend golfer. Uh, anyone can benefit from the data if you use it properly.